Hello everybody and welcome to the 250th episode of Operation Logistics. This has been going for, uh, shall we say, quite some time. And here's the thing. I think I'm ready for a break. I have been making an episode of Operation Logistics every single day now for 250 days. And yeah, I think I'm ready to step away from it for a little bit. However, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it will not be very long. So I have a plan in mind, and we're not really going to get any programming done in this particular episode. This is going to be kind of a wrap-up of, I guess we'll call this, the first phase of development. And then we'll have another phase after my little bit of a break that I'm going to detail in just a little bit. But first, let's just go through and look at what exactly we have here. So, over the last 250 days, we have created this. The loading screen doesn't even pop up because it loads so quickly now, at least on a 5x5. Let's actually go ahead and bring that up to the full 50x50, 50 50, just because, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit curious. I want to see just how bad it is when we have 50 by 50 and we're attempting, oh boy, we're attempting to go into coverage map mode. This is going to be, this is going to be awful. But regardless, we're just taking a look at what we've done here. Um, we broke something. <laughs> what did we break? And also, but how? It didn't output anything. Width and height back to five? I'm confused. How did we break that? Okay. So it works fine there. If we put it back at 50 to... 50 by 50 for the largest theoretical map size. Oh, I know what the problem is. I think we have the loading screen fully turned off, don't we? I suspect we do. And so there's nothing there to clear flag because it's actually loading. Uh, let's check here. Yeah, the loading screen defaults to off. Let's turn that right back on. Now we should be able to see the loading screen at any rate. There we go, that's more like it. And it's actually generating reasonably quickly now. We've gotten some optimization. Of course, it slows down as we go on. But we were taking stock of what we've done so far in these 250 days. And we've created this loading screen, and it generates a pretty large map with 13 million tiles. We need to do some optimization here and there, but the map generation is quite solid at this point. It's pretty much done other than optimization. There's a lot of optimization to be done though, but that's not the focus of the first stage of development. That's, I guess we'll say, the focus of the third stage of development because we're probably going to have a second phase and then a third phase, which would be the more polishing section. The, third, the second phase would be wrapping up all the mechanics, starting to work on some optimizations, things like that. But for right now, here we have our map as soon as it finishes loading with these big old garbage collection spikes. There we go. So we'll go ahead and skip this tutorial. And here's our map. Excellent. So we generate this map. We generate the biomes. There are three total biomes for world hexes. It, it can scale to theoretically any size. And at this point, it doesn't look all that impressive. But one of the things that we're going to do in the second phase of development is definitely create a way to represent in three coordinates to the end user by having, like, regions. So, like we'd have a city in here and then may maybe like some suburbs out around it or something. And then we'd, we'd just have each region be named and then have... Hello. That was a garbage collection spike. And then have something along those lines. But we've also got all of these uh, 
I guess we can call them resources? They're not really. There's the fuel cost here as well, and the fuel cost goes up and down. And then we've got the money that we've got, and then our delivery vehicles, trucks, planes, ships, and trains, and how much each of those costs us in maintenance. And of course, when we click on one of these world hexes, it brings us to this screen, which is the biome hexes for this particular area, generated in much the same way, although there's no height data. And then we click on one of those, and we come on in here. And we spent all together too long generating these roads. But I'm really happy with how the roads turned out, all things considered. And everything else, really. I'm... Hello, garbage collection spike. 74 seconds for biome generation. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, I know what that's talking about. You can go away, tooltip. Thank you. And of course, we've got our map modes here. We're going to get to those at the end, though, because I suspect I may have to uh, open Task Manager and force quit. Because I think it's going to take a really long time to generate coverage. That's just going to be something we're going to have to deal with later on. But we've also got our constructions. Specifically, we've tested the postal office. I'm not sure if we've tested the other things. We've got our demolition mode, route management for creating routes. That's all working fine. And our land management. So let's just go ahead and purchase this upscale housing here. And then we'll demolish it. And let's try building a sorting facility. There we go. So we've got a sorting facility here now. We can't put a vehicle in there. And of course, we've run out of money. So we can't actually put a vehicle on the route. But we can put vehicles on routes. Edit route. We no longer have to select the route. It just auto-selects it. And we can have our path set up like this. We can even send it to a different biome hex. And we can even send it to a different world hex. If we want to come up here, go back into edit route mode, and come up here, that takes a little while. That's something we'll need to optimize, to be sure. <laughs> oh boy. That takes a while indeed. I'm sure it'll get there eventually. I didn't expect it to take this long. I thought we got it much faster than this. Hmm. Let's check the pathfinding. We've made a couple of changes to pathfinding since we tested that, I guess. And the pathfinding script isn't open. That's, uh... Or is it up here? Uh, nope. It's not open. Well, we can't open it either. Well, that's exciting. Anyway, as I was saying, it, it, it works, theoretically, eventually. We may have made some changes that broke it a little bit, but we'll be able to fix that in the next round of, uh, in the next round of development. And we also added in some map modes for coverage, ownership, and demand. Of course, these buttons over here are going to need icons and things like that. That's all things that would happen in the third stage of development, the polishing stage. So let's go ahead and talk real quick while we're waiting to see if this thing catches up ever. <laughs> let's go ahead and talk real quick about what the plans are for when we're coming back to this and what I'm planning on doing instead. So I'm planning on taking a bit of a break from programming altogether because I've been doing it every day for 250 days now, and that, you know, tends to get a little tiresome now and then, especially when, as I, as I do, I don't take a break on weekends or holidays, so it, it kind of takes a toll. And honestly, Operation Logistics right now, because of that toll, is one of the reasons why I'm currently behind in my production schedule, because I look at it and I'm just like, ugh, I just don't feel like it. So I think I really need this break. Anyway, as I was saying, what is my plan? My plan is I'm going to play a little bit of Kerbal Space Program in this slot. So I had a, a concept a while, or not really a while back, like a week ago, that I was going to do off camera in single player, and that was a career mode spaceport built on Minmus. 
And that sounds like a nice little short-term project that I could put together, maybe have done in, I don't know, 30 to 60 episodes tops? Absolutely tops? Depending on how bad I am at landing at the same place. That's never really something I have tried to do in Kerbal Space Program. So that's going to get exciting. That's going to start up tomorrow at 10 a.m. So that will be on the 14th of June. So yeah, that's kind of the plan. And then immediately following that, we will begin the second stage of development of Operation Logistics. And it kind of looks like this isn't coming back, doesn't it? That's a little exciting. Okay, time to fire up the task manager and take a look at what's going on here interestingly the unity editor is currently only using four gigs of ram that's fascinating usually when we have the map this big it's using more like 12 gigs of ram that's very interesting that means that most of that is editor overhead that i wasn't seeing before because this is a fresh startup Okay. Well, that means we're doing a lot better on RAM usage than I thought. That's a good sign. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and in the release calendar here for the operation, operation logistics to-dos, I'm going to move the vehicle loading from down here to right here. Vehicle loading. Okay. So with that being in, in the... In the schedule there. We're going to keep this around and uh, I'm in fact I'm going to go ahead and move this right now. Whoa okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and move this right now into July because I expect we will probably be back to operation logistics either in July or August. I'm not sure which yet but it'll be somewhere in there depending on how quickly I get my goals achieved in Kerbal Space Program. So this is going to be a relatively short break as long as my channel goes. No, uh, no MechWarrior 2 situation going on here, I hope. But I will come back to this because I think we have a really solid foundation for an interesting game here. However, it needs a lot of work. So I expect Phase 2 will probably be something like another 250 days or something. Oof. It's going to be interesting because there's a lot ahead of us. It's a long, long road. I suppose when I'm only working on it for 15 minutes a day-ish, I mean, technically I record in recording sessions of four to eight at a time, so I work on it for, you know, usually around an hour to two hours a day. But even so, that's not a lot in terms of game development. So that's that's kind of the plan going forward is... I'm going to take a quick break from Operation Logistics, and uh, I should write down that um, in the known issues, I mean, it could be the get nearest building calls. It, it could be this right here, using the int3 conversion in the root generation. If it's a super long path, the get nearest building calls might be slow. This is a pretty long path, so there is that. However, long paths generate really slowly okay um we might want to we might want to convert pathfinding from vector 3 directly to in 3 okay now we've already got this here but having it in multiple places is fine and of course, in terms of the things that we got done, we also have the vehicles able to follow the route, and the vehicles pick up packages that spawn, and they bring them back to the facility, which which then sorts them. Does it sort them right now? It does sort them right now. We just don't load it back on. Okay. So, major things that we're going to do in stage two. Let's, let's actually just go ahead and come in here and... I'm going to create a new little section here. Major things we'll do in phase two of development. 
So a lot of this is going to be quality of life things. Like, for example, the ability to um, create regions, creating regions to describe int threes to players more intuitively. Um, another big thing that we're going to do is going to be the demand map mode and general map mode optimization. Another major thing that we're going to do is uh, going to be the loading process because load specifically specifically the vehicle loading. So I guess we'll take this and put this here. Because that's going to be technically vehicle loading, in my opinion, probably should have been in phase one. But I kind of ran out of steam for phase one, which is unfortunate. So vehicle loading in, is going to be bumped to phase two. Quality of life things like creating regions to describe int threes to players more intuitively. Demand map mode and general map mode optimization. In fact, the optimization isn't really a phase two thing, right? So phase two is going... Phase one was primarily about getting things done on the back end. Phase two... Phase two is more about player-facing systems, allowing them to intelligently design their... Uh, We'll call it a logistics network. So that's kind of the plan for phase two. Whereas phase three... Phase three is more about optimization and beautification. We'll call it that. Okay. So that's the general plan. For Operation Logistics going forward. It's going to be going on hiatus for a couple of maybe months. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to lay out my goals for the KSP playthrough a little bit more clearly in the next video. However, I don't expect that that will take anywhere near as long as the previous KSP playthrough, and it will probably be done realistically. I mean, it's going to be a career mode play, so it's going to take a little bit of time to get set up, and we might do a few long-range missions from the spaceport as well, but I'll, I'll get that all sorted out, what we're planning on doing with that, in the next video coming tomorrow at 10 a.m., which of course is the 14th, right? Yes, the 14th. Okay, so subscribe for more, and I will see you all back in Operation Logistics after that KSP game. See you all next time.